All right, guys, the gastro, let's get this bigger, the gastrointestinal system, or just the GI system. So as I do with all these science videos, um, we have some questions that are going to help focus us uh, throughout the video, and then these questions will show up again at the end of the video so that you can answer them. But we're going to go through the process of answering them now. Um, so some of the focuses, uh, where are nutrients absorbed within the duodenum, uh, the main site of water absorption, uh, being able to describe the process of chemical digestion uh, as digestion and absorption. Those are two uh, big concepts. Um, <clears throat> the difference between glucagon and insulin, knowing what peristalsis is, and uh, carbohydrates need to be broken down into blank before they can be absorbed. So being able to know the answers to all of that as well as uh, there are many hormones uh, in which we have to know the function of the hormones as well as uh, the origin and function of some digestive enzymes. So there's quite a bit, quite a bit in this section. So let's go ahead and kick it off with a little intro to digest and, uh, digestion and absorption. The GI system converts food into nutrients that the body can use. This is done through digestion and absorption. Digestion is the chemical and mechanical breakdown of foods into smaller compounds that can be utilized by the body. After digestion is complete, their nutrients are absorbed or moved into the bloodstream from the intestine. Intestines. Okay, so that's uh, pretty straightforward. All right, and then we look here at the GI tract, and so we'll be especially focusing on the duodenum and the large and small intestine. Let's see, what did I want here? Okay. So we'll just go ahead and go to that one. Um, the salivary glands release digestive enzymes and begin the process of chemical digestion. Chewed food is called the bolus and passed through the esophagus and into the stomach. The contents of the stomach are called chyme, and chyme exits the stomach and enters the small intestine. Digestion is completed in the small intestine. Okay, so the small intestine is the main site for absorption of nutrients. That's an important one to know. Uh, digestion is completed, and absorption begins in the small intestine. Okay, so in the small intestine, both digestion is completed, absorption begins. The pancreas digests lipids and fats in the small intestine. The epiglottis is a flap of cartilage that covers the trachea and routes food to the esophagus while in the process of swallowing. Okay, and then as we look at uh, peristalsis, peristalsis is the wave-like smooth muscular transaction, contraction rather, of the digestive system beginning in the esophagus that moves food along the digestive tract in the normal direction, which is mouth to anus. All right, so let's see here. I think we got a question on that. Pretty simple. If you look down the second to last uh, bullet point, and just what is peristalsis? Again, <clears throat> it's the wave-like smooth muscular contraction of the digestive system, and it starts in the uh, esophagus and moves food along the digestive tract in the normal direction. Okay. And it's just continuing here with the GI tract. The esophageal sphincter separates the esophagus from the stomach. The pyloric sphincter is located between the stomach and duodenum, the first part of the small intestine. The pH of the stomach is maintained between 1 and 2 by the release of gastric juice, which contains hydrochloric acid, as well as enzymes that begin the chemical digestion of protein. The contents of the stomach, which if you remember from a minute ago, it's called chyme, exit the stomach and enter the small intestine, where digestion is completed and absorption begins. The three sections of the small intestine are the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. The stimulus for release of secretin 
its time in the duodenum. The secretin stimulates the pancreas to release bicarbonate. Okay. So let's go through uh, the duodenum and the jejunum, ileum, and cecum. The duodenum is located is the location of digestion, and the jejunum and ileum are where the nutrients are absorbed, with the jejunum absorbing approximately 90% of the nutrients. Digested material passes from the ileum through the cecum. The cecum is part of the large intestine. Okay, so as we go back to our questions. Where are nutrients absorbed within the duodenum? Okay, so the duodenum is the location of digestion, and the jejunum and the ileum are where these nutrients are absorbed. Right? Again, with the jejunum uh, representing 90%. The large intestine is the main site of water reabsorption and the absorption of vitamin K and certain minerals. And again, if we go back to these questions, uh, what is the, the first, I guess I forgot to put the, the first bullet point up there, but the first one that you see, what is the main site of water reabsorption? Large intestine, right? Okay, so let's get into a little more detail on uh, digestion and absorption. Uh, mechanical digestion involves the physical breakdown of food into smaller pieces. Chewing, the churning process of the stomach, and the muscular action of peristalsis physically mash food particles apart, creating a greater surface area for chemical digestion. Chemical digestion involves enzymes or acids that break down food at the molecular level. Digestive enzymes are secreted by certain exocrine organs, such as the pancreas or liver, and by specialized cells in the lining of the stomach and intestines. Enzymes are released in the inactive zymogen form and are rendered active only in the presence of other digestive compounds such as hydrochloric acid. Okay, and so I think we had a chemical digestion question. Describe the process of chemical digestion. So we just did it, and so as you, you know, as we get a few minutes further down the road towards the end of this video, seeing if you can go back and describe the process of chemical digestion for yourself. Okay, so then we get into enzymes and hormones. Okay, so there's a lot of them, right? So what do we have here? Nine different digestive enzymes. And we need to be able to describe all of them a little bit. So I'm just going to go through them one by one here. Um, but these are things you should expect to be tested on and really have to commit to your memory. So saliva, the origin is the salivary glands, which means the mouth. And the function is to lubricate the mouth, break down carbohydrates and starch through salivary amylase and break down fats through salivary lipase. Okay, so origin and function for each of these, right? Function, probably more important, probably more likely to be tested on. Hydrochloric acid, origin is parietal cell cells, which means stomach, and its function is to sterilize potentially harmful bacteria and converts pepsinogen to pepsin. The pepsin origin is chief cells, which again means stomach, and it digests protein by breaking bonds of amino acids. We just keep running right through these. Uh, gastric lipase, the origin is also chief cells, meaning stomach, and its function is to digest lipids and fats in the stomach. The origin of mucus is goblet cells, still we're in the stomach, and its function is to maintain the mucosal lining of the stomach and protect the stomach walls from the digestive activity of gastric enzymes such as hydrochloric acid. Okay, we got four left here. Um, bile, the commonly asked one, is produced by the liver but is stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. The liver is involved in metabolizing and removing drugs and toxins from the body, producing bile and storing glycogen. As so we look at uh, pancreatic bicarbonate, uh, it originates in the pancreas and neutralizes 
the acidic contents of the stomach. This also occurs in the small intestine. Uh, pancreatic lipase, uh, not surprisingly, originates in the pancreas and digests lipids and fats in the small intestine. And then finally, the last enzyme is uh, trypsin, which originates in the pancreas and small intestine and digests proteins in the small intestine. Okay, so there was a lot of them, right? And you've got to be familiar with all of them. It's something that takes some time to commit to your memory, but you just there's not really one that's more likely to be tested on than the other. All nine of them are important. And hormones. So we have seven different hormones that we want to be familiar with also. Okay, so we'll just go through each of these. Uh, insulin and glucagon are a little more likely to be tested on, but you need to be, be, be familiar with all of them. The function of gastrin is to increase motility. Gastrin is released from the stomach or small intestine due to the arrival of protein in the stomach. It stimulates gastric acid and muc mucosal secretion and then increases mu motility. So that's your main point though there, though, is that it increases motility. Uh, the stimulus for the release of insulin is low blood glucose levels. It is released from the pancreas and the function of insulin is to lower blood glucose levels. The stimulus for the release of Glucagon, on the other hand, is low blood glucose levels. Glucagon is released from the pancreas, and its function is to initiate the breakdown of glycogen and increase blood glucose levels. So again, insulin, the function is to lower blood glucose levels. Glucagon, function is to increase blood glucose levels. And that relates to a question that we have. Uh, the fourth one, what is the difference between the functions of glucagon and insulin? So you definitely want to be familiar with, with those two. Okay, uh, the function of ghrelin is to increase hunger. This The stimulus for release is an empty stomach. Um, so move on to leptin. Uh, the stimulus for release is fat in the bloodstream. Uh, leptin has the function of reducing hunger by signaling satiety. Uh, the stimulus for the release of secretin is common in the duodenum. Secretin stimulates the pancreas to release bicarbonate. And then finally, the last one, the stimulus for the release of somatostatin is acid in the stomach. Its function is to inhibit gastric secretion and slow digestion. Okay. And then we get into the questions. So you have these questions, but in addition, we do need to be familiar with the function of those seven hormones. I would put an extra emphasis on insulin and glucogen, um, and also the origin and function of the nine digestive enzymes that we went over. If you can know all that, that is definitely a lot for one section. Um, but if you're familiar with all that, plus being able to answer these questions, you're going to be in great shape.